Hey everyone, welcome to the Horror PSA presented by Scary Nerd, and as always, we are your hosts. I'm Paul. I'm Saul. And I'm Angie. The following is a public service announcement. Affable hillbillies Tucker and Dale are on a vacation at their dilapidated mountain cabin when they are mistaken for murderers by a group of preppy college students. That's right. We watched Tucker and Dale versus Evil to kick off another movie for our April Fools event this month. So yep, 2010. I believe this was Saul's first time. Is that correct? But yeah, this was my first time around, and I was pleasantly surprised with this movie. I really hadn't heard anything much about this movie. So when I read the hypnosis, I'm like, okay, this is going to be interesting. And then when you actually start watching it and see how everything unfolds, I'm like, holy crap, this movie is awesome. And how the hell did I miss it? It's brilliant movie. It's it's brilliant comedy, and it's again, it's one of those. It's so funny because it's so simple. Yes, yeah. it really is the simplicity of all. And I think it was uh, it was one of those movies that we kind of just stumbled upon because I think Netflix kept recommending it to us, and we we're like, "What the hell is this movie?" And like, "Why would we want to watch this?" And we didn't see anything about it until finally, I think um, your sister was like, "Yeah, it's really funny. You guys should watch it. We think you'd like yeah, it." Yeah, because she's a huge Alan Tudyk fan because she's in all the nerd circles with Alan Tudyk. So. <laughs> she recommended it to us because she said it was hilarious, and we fell in love with it since then. Yeah. The only person of note in this movie is Alan Tudyuk. So when I saw him in it, I'm like, okay, this is going to be interesting. And then, when every, like I said, when everything unfolds, it's just so well done that if you've missed this movie, you need to do yourself a favor and watch it. Oh, yeah. And even if you've seen this movie before, you need to go back and rewatch it because there are so many little things you'll pick up on the second or third or even fourth time around. Because there's a lot of little subtle hints that the director and the set designer all put in there to amp up the horror. Well, the thing that I appreciate about it being the first time around is you don't really get an idea of what where they're going to go. So when you see everything start unfolding, you start catching on. You're like, oh, crap what's going to happen next, and I'm looking forward to it. Because you kind of get the impression from the beginning that, okay, it's going to be a typical spring break college movie where these guys, where these kids go out and party, and they run into some redneck hillbillies that are going to kill them. And it kind of happens, but in a different type of way to where it was just well comically done. Yeah, and when we first see Dale and Tucker, I love how... For some reason, Dale doesn't have her shirt on. <laughs> yeah, there's a lot of little like there's a I don't lot know if of like little movie mistakes like or things. That. things that it's like he's got like, no shirt on. He's got why does he have no shirt yeah, on as just, they're driving to the store? <laughs> he's just looking over with his mouth open, like oh. No, it was like I didn't know what to expect from this movie because it's like you know Dale and Tucker versus evil. So I'm thinking is it like an Evil Dead thing? Like what what do we mean by evil here? So. Um, and then oh, and that have, cabin was like a pure ripoff of the well, yeah. I mean, it's, slash I mean, once any, you get into it, once you find out what the movie's about, it makes more sense. Yeah, but I, I didn't know what to expect because at first, that little like uh, that little beginning scene where like the reporters are going back to I don't even know where the fuck they're going back to like that what? mill. It was it the mill. It was the mill. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so was it the mill? Yeah. It was the I, I thought mill. it was the cabin at first, but then like, but That's the fucking thing burned about. down. Like. So yeah, it must have been the mill, I yeah. guess. It had to have been. So anyway, so they go in there and like you see the guy, you know, he he kills those two or whatever. And then you see like his face looking that like and you know, it's it's the version or you know, the vision, the camera vision, you know, that they put on there. Yeah. Like the found footage kind of thing. So at first I'm like, is he some sort of like a demon or something? Like I didn't know what to expect. I thought they were gonna like go to this cabin and summon a demon and it was gonna be a comedy <laughs> like that. Yeah. So but then when you get to the first time that um when uh, Tucker is going through that log and he hits the bee's nest and he comes out swinging at the bees, but he's <laughs> he's throwing the chainsaw around. I'm like, all right, that's where it's going. I'm like, okay, now I understand what they're doing. Like oh, that, see, that set the rules for the rest of the comedy for me. See, for me, yeah. it was it was that opening scene for them at the gas station, and I wrote it down when he's like, just smile and laugh. And so he goes over there and he's like, he'll go camping, and he just starts laughing hysterically. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm from from there on, I was like, okay, that's what kind of ridiculous humor they're going to get into. And it is just little subtle nods like that each time. And they let the physical and the practical effects take the rest of the comedy with it. And it's just brilliant. The, the thing that cracked me up about that when he went to go talk to him is when he walked up to him, I don't know if you guys picked up on it, but he was 
the pole he was holding was a scythe. Oh yeah. I'm like <laughs> he's gonna he's like he's just gonna make it creepy because they're realizing this guy is just coming to them with a scythe. And, and he just finished eating a bunch of pickled eggs that he bought. Yeah. At the store. Oh, I'm sure he smelled great. <laughs> oh man. yeah. Like he's just talking to Tucker about it. He's just eating these pickled deviled eggs. Oh. There was a I, okay. So in the gas station, we watch a lot of the times we watch these movies with the captions on. So it picks up on random things that you may not notice in the background. When they're in there, the shop guy is talking to Tucker, and he's like, all right, we'll go over the list again. So he's reading random things off the list. He They slipped in there, like, feminine napkins, uh, condoms, like, <laughs> random shit like that. Like, yeah. I was, like, on their list, and I'm like, <laughs> that you probably wouldn't even notice or, like, pick up on. But we, I, I was like, wait, did I just say condoms yeah. and feminine napkins? Like Watching with captions on opens up a whole new world. You're like, wait, what? When did that happen? <laughs> when did somebody <laughs> say that? <laughs> Yeah, actually seeing the words of what they're what they're saying, you're like, I think it's some like how it emphasizes it more. This be when after after Dale uh, strikes out to talking to the college kids when he's got the scythe and he's just like, see, they hate my face. <laughs> <Love that>. <laughs> <laughs> they hate my face. I'm like, oh, poor Dale. He just wants some loving. Oh, so they get to their vacation home. Well, first they get pulled over. Oh, that's right. There was they, almost they a, yeah. meet the yeah, ominous pulled, pulled hillbilly over. cop. <laughs> you got to meet the ominous hillbilly cop. That just he doesn't explain no, anything. The, by the way, it's the harbinger kind of thing. It is a harbinger. He just goes. There's nothing but pain and death up there. There's nothing but pain and suffering. Like, some could you elaborate like that, yeah. a little? Like, <laughs> you're gonna give me a warning. At least give me the rest nothing of it. But pain and suffering by that. See, the only see again as the first as a first time watcher, I was kind of confused with that because you make it they made it seem like Tucker and Dale are from that town. So for them to have that interaction with the cop that way, I'm like, they should know this dude. So then it made me think, okay, he's they're not from here. So I'm like, okay, where's it going to go if they don't know who the cop or the sheriff person is? Yeah. Yeah, it seems like they're from far away. They don't have any connection to this place because they don't know anything about the murders. They've got no idea what that shack was involved in. And to the, it's to their own idiocy at some points because they're yeah. looking, when they get to the shack, they're looking at all these newspaper clippings that have been hung up on the wall about all this death and murder and despair. And the one thing they pick out is the chili dog coupon that has no expiration date. Hey, buy three, get two free. That, that's a meal for them. It right is there. a meal. It's a deal, too. Some chili dogs and some PBR. <laughs> PBR. Oh, that's the only beer they the drink. Dog? With how idiots, how much of idiots they were, is you see them pull up to the house, which gives you the whole Evil Dead type house feel for it, and they're like, "We just hit the jackpot." Yeah, and they're like, like "Look, look, look at all these cars that came with the property. <laughs> There's one over there. There's one over hey, that's there." Scrap metal. You can make money off of that. Right? <laughs> yeah, they're they they hit the jackpot because they're like. They call this a fixer-upper? Yeah. Like, we're not going to be there that much long. So they're, like, totally going home about the little cabin that they just bought. I love how they set up the whole middle uh, the middle of the room beam. Because you knew, I'm like, all right, that's going to oh, come yeah. into play again later. Yeah. Like, that's got to come in. And, I, you know, and it was the, when it finally does come back with the sheriff or whatever, I'm like, you almost forget about it for a second. Because they're just talking. I'm like, what the hell is going to go on here? Because the sheriff was, like pretty calm for that whole situation he really you know? was like, even though knowing's like okay you guys must think i'm a fucking moron i know what the girl's like why doesn't she, why doesn't he arrest <laughs> why him like why don't they arrest them i'm like that's a good question that is, that is a very I know, good like, question shouldn't like should when you roll up on that scene and there's you know a half of a person laying there reason. right I'm like, I, i'm gonna call for backup you know because we're remote it's gonna take them a while mm -hmm. either way yeah, I'm just gonna call for backup. I love what I love. And it was hilarious. It was hilarious to me how Dale was still holding the the leg for the longest time. Oh, yeah. He doesn't yeah, put that, it down. That little bit when they like, when yeah, when he was like, "Well, let's go inside. Uh, let's go inside and show me." You know, the other one you got in there. He's like, "I'm gonna put this leg down first. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the, that's the best part. On accident. <laughs> that's the best part about this movie is everyone is dumb. Like the hillbillies yeah. are dumb. But the college kids are dumb, but in like a gross way. It's a different type of dumb. Like yes. everyone has their yeah. own different like level or different like, you know, like 
subsegment of dumb, I guess you would call it. Yeah, and like the hillbillies, Dell and Tucker, are like the heart of gold heroes, and the college kids are like the crazy, sex crazed, like maniacs. And yeah, Omega, Beta, or whatever. Some fraternity that they were chanting about in the beginning but <laughs> the thing the thing that i started looking forward to especially with the college kids after the first death when you realize where this movie is going i'm like okay how are they gonna die oh yeah because this is it's hilarious. a suicide pack it's a suicide <laughs> pack I love I love when they when they first when Dale and Tucker first see that the college kids are out in the woods too. They're at the lake fishing. College kids. College kids. <laughs> <laughs> but they rescue their friend and they're like, "Hey, we got your friend. Come back. <laughs> what are you doing?" You mean in the in the lake? In the lake, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Tucker's like, "We got your friend. We got your friend. <laughs> <laughs> Go get her. Where are you going?" And I love. They take, yeah, they, they take when off they, running. Yeah, they take off running, and one of the random white dudes tells the main evil Chad dude, "I do. I, I, it was really dark, but it looked like they were eating her face off." Yeah. <laughs> Like, that's a lot to get out of a scene if you knew it was dark. Like, you got to be close to see it, yeah. somebody eating a face. It was dark, and I, I ran off in the opposite direction. <laughs> yeah, I, I was running sure, away. I'm pretty sure they were eating her face. I love how when they rolled up on the cab, and they're like, well, I'll just go up there and knock. He's like, maybe I'll just go up there and knock. And they look at him and was like, I said, maybe. Yeah, I love, too, in the in the lake scene, before we move on from the lake scene, how Dale is such a heart of gold guy that he actually, like, calls out Tucker for being a peeping Tom. <laughs> He's like, stop it! You're being a peeping Tom. Tell me, Dale, if there was a naked, there's a college girl about to get naked. You don't shut up my name. <laughs> just like you were being a t- peeping Tom. <laughs> love that. I love how Dale um, is just a, a heart of gold character, but he's so ridiculous. He's exactly like Jangers. Yes, he is. Yeah. He is exactly like his dog. And the thing that I thought was funny, too, is later on in the movie where he yells out Tucker's name again, and he's like, oh, shit, I wasn't supposed to say his name. So he makes what a little slide remark about, oh, it wasn't his name or something like that. I love how but, once the college girl wakes up, what's her name? Allie. Allie. When Allie, Allie wakes up and she's like, my friends just left me, and Dale's like, don't be mad. Some people just aren't good in a crisis. <laughs> <laughs> like, oh, I Dale. Up, I love how when she woke up, she... Dale automatically assumed that she didn't like the pancakes. So he's like, okay, I guess I'll make you something else because she has no idea where she is. She's freaking out. Yeah. And he's like, all right, I guess I'll make you something else. And he goes and he just leaves and he comes back with more food. He was afraid she was, uh, she was not, you know, the carbs was too much for her. Yeah. I love it. He's like, oh, you must <laughs> hate pancakes. You must really uh, hate uh, pancakes. The pancakes. <laughs> Who hates pancakes? That's the thing they got me. I'm like, pancakes are delicious. Oh, I know. But the first, the first kill... Welcome um, to the Pancakes Podcast. I'm your host. <laughs> right? After the first kill where the wasp chainsaw running death. And, what, uh, by, <laughs> and, and by wasp, you mean the actual wasps, not the, the white college kids. Yes, I mean the actual wasps, not the college that kids. Just, it cracked me up because you, you could see everything being set up for it. Yeah. Because you have that one guy who's like, okay, I guess I'll go look. Then you see Dick, not Dale. You see Tucker cutting cutting the log, and you're like, "Uh oh, this is where the chainsaw is going to come into play, and he's going to accidentally kill him with the chainsaw." Is my guess. But when you see him running, you're like, "This is just too funny because dude thinks he's going after him because he's angry, but no, he's getting stung by was it wasp or was it bees?" I think it was. I think they said wasp nest. I don't remember, but. I have to say that the the I really enjoyed the makeup that they did for his like his stings yes. or whatever in his face because when he came in and poured that beer in his face I was I was like I know exactly how refreshing that probably feels like, <laughs> he pours feel beer that. on everything if you watch any time well he that's gets all up, they have he pours okay the beer. <laughs> hey if you're a guy when your best your bud you're about to go you know fishing and fix up your cabin for the weekend you're bringing beer and like steak mm-hmm. and that's all you have the whole fucking weekend I, I, and a, and a six pound jar of deviled eggs. Are Apparently. Yeah, the pickled eggs. Sorry. So when you were talking about the setup, oh, of imagine this scene. that a jar of pick- yeah. deviled eggs. Ew! <laughs> Pour it on your face, bro. You just smell vinegar all day. No, Ugh. I said deviled. Oh, deviled eggs. <laughs> oh. <laughs> anyway, going back to the setup of that scene, when they when they're both slow motion running and they cross paths and they look at each yeah. other. 
<laughs> they like confused look at each other. They both faces. look at each other like, "What the fuck is this person doing?" <laughs> and it's so ridiculous. It's like, why are, you're like, why are you running? Because I know why I'm running. Now, why are you running? And that's what you get that confused look. And while Tucker, you know, guy, but the one thing that's funny is because you see that you see the college kid running. He's like, "I'm running because you're chasing me with a chainsaw." But Tucker is like, "I'm running because I'm getting attacked by wasps." Why are you running? And it's just that confusion. And then the death just happened. You're like, holy crap. Yeah. And, and then like he sees he sees the, the wasp or beer or whatever land on his face. And he kind of gets that realization after the fact, like before he was like, oh, the, oh, fuck. Yeah. But like, I, oh. I love that, it that, because it's, that it, that's, like... the, that's the first death sets it up to show like how different sides of the story are. Because when Tugger goes back in and he's talking to Allie, he's like, I saw some of your friends out there and they must be allergic to bees or something because they were running. Yeah. Like that just shows <laughs> what side of the story Tucker's on and where the college kids are. And that's how that big adds, of a communication that, issue they have. That adds another layer to the comedy for me because it really is just like complete misunderstanding well, like like the most ridiculous misunderstanding like yes. you can ever have in, you know in this setting well, here, it's funny that you guys mentioned that because i don't know did you read the imdb stuff on it no we haven't yet here's the one thing that i want to do now is i want to find this movie on blu-ray or dvd whichever one it is but there is a version of the movie where it's from the perspective of the college kids Ooh. and it shows and it shows them being like psychotic killers so you see it from their perspective as them being the murderous ones rather than being being just fumbling idiots hmm that would be an interesting perspective i love that the college kids <laughs> after they they think that they're having a suicide pack they're like we have to hide all the sharp objects <laughs> like they're just trying <laughs> to help these college kids out <laughs> I we love have to when, hide uh... them all I love when Allie wakes up after the she gets hit in the head with a shovel, right? When they're digging the shit out, okay. right? Yeah. Um, I love when she wakes up and um, Dale is just so like, you know, like freaking out about everything. He's like, I'm oh, the, I, I'm I really can't see. Like, <laughs> and then like with the scene where the part in the scene where she goes out and like sees all like the you know her half a friend, the the cop is there, you know the other guy that shot himself is there, like. She sees all this and like she's looking around like holy shit and then she has that line she's like how long was I asleep yeah. whatever, like, <laughs> and like that to me was like almost like you wake up and you're like the apocalypse happened while you were asleep kind of thing because yeah. that's exactly yeah. like what she's waking up into like what the fuck happened like he could have told her anything at that point and be like the world ended like you know aliens came yeah. and they chopped your friend in half and like <laughs> everything outside would have corroborated yeah. any wild story he could have made up oh uh, well the thing, let's talk about the next death with uh, the other friend and the wood chipper which we knew that was going to come into play somehow oh yeah the wood chipper scene is such a great scene because it's pure physical comedy mixed with practical effects and gore and I, gore we, yes I, buckets of blood I, we, as soon as you saw the wood chipper it was like one of them is going to fall into it i don't know how or when but you know it's going to play into it so when you see again tucker doing whatever it is that he's doing and you're like, uh-oh, now I know it's going to happen. And when it happens, it just, again, hilarity ensues. You know who- I think what? That was, that's when, after that happens, that's when they do their whole spiel about they must be some suicide death pack cult or whatever need be. Yeah. My favorite person, my favorite character in this whole movie is the stupid blonde ditzy chick. I love yes. her in this movie. <laughs> she is hilarious. When she takes that face full of blood, like... She's just like, perfect ah! for it. Like the way her face looks, the way she takes it. I'm just like you were perfect to get splattered yes. with blood. I was, just waiting, for this I was scene. waiting. I was waiting for her death. I'm like, okay, how is she gonna die? Because it's gotta be good. Oh, I love her. Just her whole like. She's just trying to smoke. She's just trying to get through. She's like, she does not <laughs> like Chad. She's pissed at Chad. <laughs> Like when they're like, whose yes. idea was it to come up here? She's like, Chaz. <laughs> Chaz. <laughs> and later on, when she comes back and they're all sitting around drinking tea, she's like, I could really love a cup of tea right now. <laughs> I love her. Uh, all, all the dancers were perfectly set up. The friend who took off to go find the sheriff and comes back like, oh, no. How is he going to die? 
and then you see him shoot himself with a gun because Dale tells him he had the safety on. So they, they basically didn't kill anyone in this no. whole thing. Like, no. Because even in the end, um, Dale doesn't even really kill the other kid, like nope. Chad or whatever. Like, so, yeah, like it's just like they, they really have harmed no one in this whole fucking thing. I love when the, the kid who with the car who comes back with the sheriff shoots himself in the head trying to take the safety off of the gun. <laughs> I love it. Tucker's like, you've got to start being more careful. Like he's just, Tucker's just so frazzled it is, with these yeah, fucking like, college kids. He has like frustration. Like, I don't know what else we can do. Like, I know. Everyone's just died around us. I love later on, too, when he's talking to Dale about going after Allie. And he's like, she's, she needs you now more than ever. She's always fallen down and hitting her head. Like, she's not safe. <laughs> like, you have to go after her. Oh, my gosh. This movie was, it was hilarious. Just everything that kept happening was like, how much more ridiculous can this get? And it just kept topping itself with all the deaths and the way the kids kept getting killed. It just was. Oh, and Alec Tudyk, Alan Tudyk has that quick comedic timing where he can just slip in those little one-liners. Like, and he has so many. Like, when he's talking about the wood chipper, he's like, the store not better charge me for this. And, <laughs> and when the sheriff takes the, the nails to the head, he's like, he's going to walk it off. He's going to be fine. He's like, he'll be okay. He's <laughs> fine. He's like, he's fine, he's fine, he's walking it off. Look, he's good, he's fine. And I then when they get it. into the argument about how we should have fixed that, he's like, I thought we did. Like, I told you we should have fixed that. And you're not putting this again, on like, me. <laughs> yeah, he's like, you're not putting this on me. Like, I told you we should have fixed it. After a while in the movie, I think it was more fun to just like, like, all right, how's this person going to die next? Like, yeah. how's this person going to get it? Like, it's got to be good. And like every death kind of paid off in their own way. Like, and there were so many that it's like, I, I love it. The, uh, the scene where they're having the, the talk and the tea and all that. And then the other dude with the ditzy blonde, they come in and he's got like that weed the whacker thing. Or, yeah. And <laughs> like, you know. Oh baby, why didn't you duck? Why didn't you duck? And I was like, oh my god! Like, I'm glad that Allison got to see that in yeah. the just to be like, look, like, okay, and then someone Chad, got to witness this. Yeah, at least. Chad tries to th throw the lantern at them, and he sets yeah. that guy on fire. Stop dropping roll! Stop dropping roll! <laughs> Stop dropping roll! No, don't oh throw that god. on him. Why are you throwing alcohol on him? I love before that when they when they get Jaggers and they're holding him hostage outside and they're like, we're going to shoot your dog. And Dale's like, I swear to God, I'll be really mad. I'll be really you shoot mad. my dog, I'll be really mad. I'll be really, really mad if you shoot my dog. Like, poor like, leave him Dale. Alone, leave him alone. Poor That's Dale is just having a traumatic day. He is not equipped emotionally to deal with all this. He He's no. sobbing because he's scared. And it, I love it. I love Dale. I'm going to hug him. He just he made this movie just because of how innocent he kind of was, because it's just one of those. He means good. He's got like you said, he's got the heart of gold and all of this shit is just happening around him and he doesn't know how to react to it. Yeah. Oh, and I want to talk about before before they're sitting down to the tea, the shot of Tucker swinging upside down after he rescues Jiggers and the college kids get him and they hang him upside down from the tree. <laughs> that shot of them just like. It's just like a fade in shot of Alec Tudor swinging up upside down back and forth for the longest his time. POV. Yeah, no, it no his like oh, it's just like a shot the, of his face. Of yeah, and yeah. it's just swinging back and forth in and out of the shot and I it's just brilliant cuz it's so comedic because you're like that man is hanging upside down swinging back and forth. And I just had to think that poor Alan Tudor had to hang upside down and swing back and forth god knows how many times to get that shot. Look at my package. The, see, okay, so where, <laughs> that's where I know Alan Tudyk from. I know that's where you were going with your stupid fucking Sandra Bullock movie. Yes, Twenty Eight Days <laughs> is where I know Alan Tudyk from. It's amazing, weird, weird, weirdest trilogy ever. <laughs> um, no, I love that in that scene where he's trying to go. She's like, "I've got the cooler right now with ten to twelve beers <laughs> on ice. To twelve beers, <laughs> they're yours." <laughs> <laughs> I love this oh, movie. There's I am movie. not a thrill seeker. <laughs> when they cut off this his fingers, so and then Dale finds him, he's like, "They cut off his <laughs> bullet, bullet fingers. fingers." Oh, I love that when they're they're having their little meeting, and Chad shares his his hillbilly story, and everybody's face after Chad shares, like even even the friend, the girl that's there with him, is like, "What?" <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like if, if we would have known that, we wouldn't have come out to the woods with you, Chad. Sorry, buddy. 
Oh, and another one of I, I just love Alan Tudyk in this movie when he when Chad gets up after the the cabin's been exploded, <laughs> and Allie's like, "Should we help him?" And then Chad screams, and Alan Tudyk has this little yelp sound that he makes. <laughs> ah! yeah. He does like this kind of like woman scream kind of thing. Yes. Like it's amazing. He's amazing. I don't think there's enough we can say about this movie. It's 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 perfect. It's just comedy gold. It is comedy gold, and the the practical effects work, the horror elements work, even though they're ridiculously done. I mean, it's not scary in any sort of way, but the thematics that they use throughout the yeah. whole movie and the practical effects placement and the it gore. Uses the right, and, it uses the right tropes in a way that it makes them, like you're making fun of them, but it makes sense for the for the movie. It's it's almost to me like the way that they use it is the same way like Cabin in the Woods does. Yeah. Because it's kind of like, yeah. you know, we're still going to use those tropes in a funny way, but we're going to kind of make fun of them at the same time. But it works for this fucking movie because it's a comedy. So yeah, I love Tucker and Dale. I want there to be, they're like Abbott and Costello to me. So yeah. I, can, I want I want Tucker and Dale versus aliens. I want Tucker, <laughs> I want like the whole. Yes, like, versus, versus the dead. The, versus the werewolves, mummies. <laughs> like I, I, Yeah, I want them to take over for. I want they're 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 my Abbott and Costello. Yeah, I could, I could get down it. on so that. Who do we call about this? <laughs> I could this? get behind that. He finds a new cabin in a new place, and <laughs> new shit cabin. happens. Like <laughs> then then you know aliens land, and they gotta fight aliens, and it's just a big misunderstanding, an intergalactic misunderstanding. Officer, we would have a doozy of a day here. <laughs> These aliens landed, and I don't know what's going <laughs> on. My they property, had, they started killing themselves. <laughs> they've got some sort of intergalactic <laughs> suicide pack. Oh, that is what we need. That would make that would make life just better. That's okay. what twenty. 2020 needs is an yes. Abbott Costello version of Dylan I'm t- Tucker. I'm, no, I'm, I'm, I'm tweeting Alan Tudyk later. Yes, so. Alan Tudyk and Tyler Wait. Labine. Labine, I, I, we didn't look up exactly how to say it, but both of you This is a Canadian get on movie, it. right? Yes, I, I believe so. Everyone involved was Canadian. Yeah. This See, the movie. weird thing is with the, with, the, with the guy who played Dale, I don't remember him from really anything else. He kind of looked like, a, he looked like Jack Black's brother to me. Just with his, just with his look, because I don't know him from anything else other than now this movie. I honestly haven't seen him in anything else, but I'm pretty sure I've seen him on the previews that scroll through my Amazon. When, <laughs> Fire when, TV. Yeah, when, when you're on Prime <laughs> or whatever, and you don't pick anything, and the, the screensaver comes up, there's a there's a commercial for some old TV show that he was in, and I'm like, pretty sure it was Canadian too. Yeah, yeah, it was like it, it's like on the IMDb channel. Yeah, or so he like, might be just a Canadian yeah. actor, which is why we we haven't seen much He's of him. Mostly Canadian thing. Yeah. I love this movie. This movie is perfect. You have to watch it so many times to really get all the nuances of it. Like the ridiculous reveal at the end when like you're half hillbilly Chad. <laughs> like, like what? That reminded me of the was it that South Park where they're like you're you're half Jersey or whatever. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> uh, it's just there's so many tropes that they use. There's so many little hints and nods to different horror different aspects of horror but also different aspects of comedy and the physical comedy and it's just, it's a perfect movie really i can't find anything wrong to say about it no oh let's go back just a little bit because i just remember the funny part where allison had dale and chad sitting at the table and then she said let's tell each other side of the story and then we'll see where we're at when we get to the end of this and when he tells his whole backstory about what is it, the murder at the lake or whatever need be? The Memorial Day Massacre. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. The, the Memorial Day Massacre. He tells, sorry, he tells a story, and then Dale says, I'm sorry your family got killed. He's like, yeah, but it's about your kind. He's like, first of all, he's like, that was 20 years ago. Yeah. I was like six, so I wasn't there. <laughs> yeah. I love how he was like, I was six, so I couldn't have killed anybody. Like, it was <laughs> not me. He hurt a fish. No, I love his face first. Like, well, fuck, how am I going to follow this shit? <laughs> like, yeah. It's like, okay, I'm really sorry about your family. Uh, <laughs> I don't know what else to say. I love the one thing that I, I love their whole the conversation one- about the, the, the Dale doesn't like fishing. It's such like a, yeah. a bromance moment. And I was like, <laughs> yes, you need to have these talks. That was almost like like he was coming out of the closet or something. Yeah. Like the, the equivalent of like, him I like, don't like, I'm fishing. gay. Like, I don't like her. <laughs> I don't like fish. <laughs> The one thing I would have loved more too, so in that one scene where they had their little group therapy, is if they explained how, oh, you killed my friend, 
by chasing with a chainsaw, and they would have explained no. He was being stung by wasps or bees, whatever it was, and that happened. And then be like, well, what happened when you threw my friend to the wood chipper? And they, the one thing, I, like I said, if they would have, if they would have started saying, well, this is how everything happened, then they'll be like, oh, so this is just one giant misunderstanding. And, and that makes for a boring like, movie, so. <laughs> yeah. No, no, no. <laughs> no, hear, hear me out. You find out that okay, the people in there find out that it's all been a giant misunderstanding. But you still have all the friends on the outside that have no idea, and then they come barging in, kind of like they do, and they end up getting themselves killed to be like fucking hey there's like there's nothing we can do where these kids are not killing themselves <laughs> uh well chad wants people to die all together he doesn't care yeah chad wants yeah, to live care. life outside of the rules he says at one point <laughs> he's sick of telling everybody telling him what he can and can't do i'm like it's do you unique, just mean to murder people this is, is a that unique what you're experience talking? to be able to murder it's killing, yeah. killed out here i love the end Shut scene up, chad. i love the end scene when uh Dale brings Tucker a PBR in the hospital and like you get that outgoing <laughs> thing of how okay so they did pin it on the teenagers <laughs> which is good so Dale yeah, and Tucker the, are good to go it's a suicide pack and crazed murder <laughs> yeah too. so I was like okay at least that, that wraps up the whole cop aspect of everything <laughs> Well, he never called for backup. And, he and, didn't. And per the captioning, all he was able to manage to say in the fucking radio was Gert, Gert. Yes. <laughs> so. I love in the hospital scene how when he got his fingers back and he was like, <laughs> oh, yeah. I don't remember this finger looking like that. And they found, what is it? Uh, what was the other, the ditzy blonde's name? Oh, they, I don't Either remember. way, they, they found one of her fingers. And it wasn't her them. finger. No, we looked. Was she them? doesn't, she doesn't she have any have nail polish. She nails. Nope. So it was the other girl? No, I don't know whose finger. We don't know whose finger what it was. What other girl? The other girl was black. We were talking about yes. this last night. It could have been her finger. So we don't know whose so, fu uh, fucking finger it was. Allison has all her fingers and <laughs> that was all, all three girls that were there. <laughs> we looked because Paula's like, is that a mistake? I'm like, I don't know. Maybe they just found some of the random well, finger. The hospital was like, fuck, <laughs> we can't. We, we lost his finger. So they were like, all right, just, just grab one out of the just bin. Just grab one out of the box downstairs. Get you know? the spare. Oh my God. <laughs> they amputated somebody's hand. They're like, well, fuck it. They're not using that. Just take one <laughs> off of there. It's fine. Clean it out. Throw it on there. <laughs> you could have at least taken the nail off. Like, <laughs> That's something that's funny that I didn't catch because I thought it was going to be that other girl's finger. Yeah, we did too, but, I, but we had to we had to go back and look. We we paused and we're like, nope, nope, she's got no finger to polish on. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, but still though, that part was funny because he's like, I don't remember it looking like that. Oh, and I then love. You see the nail yeah, when they go, when Allison and Dale finally get their date and they go bowling, and Dale's like, "Life is short, BJ. <laughs> you gotta go after what you want." <laughs> <laughs> and then he gives Allison a peak helmet to wear so she doesn't hit her head anymore. And he's like, yeah, you should probably wear that every day. You hit your head a lot and you've had a lot of concussions. <laughs> she could dig a shooter hole. Hmm? <laughs> yeah, but I, again, I can't say enough of good things about this movie. This movie was, again, comedy gold, and I'm surprised I went this long without knowing about it. And I'm kicking myself that I didn't know this prior to this podcast because... It's a must watch. It is. It well, is I've said that I didn't know watch. about the alternate version. Until I now. know. We got to find that. I know. Yeah, because like I said, if you go on there on the IMDb things, when I like, I always read everything after the fact unless Paul tells me not to, like with Mother. And I saw that, I'm like, I need to see this version of it now where it's through the perspective of the kids making them seem like they're psychotic serial killers. Yeah, we we need to see that. It'll be a whole different watching experience, which is which is what movie what horror movie should be. I I believe all yes. movies you should be able to go back and rewatch them and find something new. That is the best part of rewatching a movie. I want to get yes. I want to get two copies of it so I can have it on two TVs and play both versions <laughs> oh, at the same time. Oh, that would be fun. And have an edible. And have an edible. Yeah, that would be. Oh, that'd be the a trip. <laughs> The only thing he didn't say if it was clear if it was an entire differently movie from their perspective or if it was just key moments from their perspective. Yeah. But either way though, I wanna either way though, I wanna see it too. Well, we have some homework now. We'll have to watch that or find it. And yes. Watch it. Yes. Um, I don't really think we need final thoughts today because well, we all love it. We've all said how much we love it. Uh does anybody else got anything they want to talk about? 
Please support my uh, GoFundMe for Dale and Tucker versus Aliens. I'm currently <laughs> writing a script. I'm going to be tweeting Alan Tudyk later on this afternoon, this evening. So uh, we'll see what happens. Fingers crossed, people. Once this whole COVID-19 shit goes away. Fingers we'll, we'll, crossed. We'll start filming. We do, we do need a sequel, though. I do agree with all. Whether it's aliens, whether it's zombies, vampires, werewolves. Giant spiders. We need, I'll take anything. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Bring back the old school. Like, remember, like the giant bunny movie, like the oh, giant yeah. fucking, like the, just the giant insects and all those, like, like all those fucking cheesy ass ones. But with yeah. Dale and Tucker, I would, I would pay money for those. I, I would too. I would just. Yeah. Who do we need to call about this? Come on, they Canada, need to make this happen. Get on it. <laughs> call, uh, call Trudeau. What's he doing? He's not doing anything, right? Well, he shut the country down. They're all still closed. So. Well, he's not doing anything. Right? He's got time. <laughs> Well, that wraps up this episode and this week. Sorry we were late this week. We are much like you guys and at home. We had no idea what day it was, so we were a day late on everything, guys. We much apologize. Um, and, you know, we all have kids and craziness. So, But we will still be here every week getting you guys two episodes out. Um, so please leave us feedback, uh, give subscribe, and give us a review. You can email us at podcast at scarynerd.com. You can support us on Patreon by going to patreon.com backslash scarynerd. You can check out horror news and entertainment news at scarynerd.com. And you can check us out on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. And we will be coming back on 420 with you guys with Cabin in the Woods. It's going to be our 420 movie on Monday. Yes. Yes, it's Saul's favorite movie you of sure? all time. We, we could still do I, Evil Bong I instead. love that movie. No, nobody I needs to movie. see Evil Bong again. <laughs> Funny story about Evil Bong Kids. We watched it one time because Tommy Chong was on the, well, it wasn't really a cover. The it featured was, image. <laughs> the feature image. We were like, oh, it's a Tommy <laughs> Chong movie. Maybe it'll be funny. And I waited for Tommy Chong for 90% of the movie. I asked Paul, where is Tommy Chong, Paul? <laughs> they said he was going to be in this movie. And he's in it for three minutes. Three minutes, kids. Don't watch Evil well, Bong like if you want to. Yes, it's the very, very end. Oh. Right before the final strip. I'm scene. still angry about this. <laughs> it's been years. <laughs> I'm telling you, we should do Evil Bong. Uh, okay, maybe uh, another time. Right, not this about, about not a, this 420, maybe uh, next 420. We could do a double edition. Oh, we baby. could. All right, guys. Well, that's everything for this week. We will see you on Monday. I'm not going to see Hi, anyone because they listen to us. Yes. Well, you will yes. hear us on Monday. We'll hear you again. on Monday. We'll hear you on Monday. And everybody stay safe. Wash your hands. Don't touch your face. Stay inside and stay safe. We'll see you soon. Bye, everyone.